okay just like every other day today i'm also going to tell you everything since i started making these videos there have been a few people asking me how i make the videos how i make these neat videos maybe because they want to also start making videos of their own or because they are youtubers they'd like to improve their video quality or maybe because they're just curious Without much ado, from the time I get into making one video to publishing it on YouTube, it takes me about three days. And I've divided the whole process into four steps. First is developing the idea and the second step is actually making the video or shooting the video. The third step is uh, editing the video and the fourth step is publishing. So let's go over them step by step so that you can see my workflow all the way from the beginning to the end. YouTube is actually like a business, you know, we're in the business of buying and selling people's attention. You have to give some sort of value for the time which people invest in watching your video. So content is king, be it entertainment, be it information, be it all sorts of stuff that are here. So I begin my journey making a video by one, developing an idea, and that is probably what takes the longest time. Let's make this analogy again, assuming you're going to start a blog or even a business. You know, a lot of people say, you know, I don't have a business idea, I don't know what exactly i will be writing about what can i write about i don't have any idea actually surrounding you are lots of ideas but the issue is we never get to capture them anytime something crosses my mind that i may convert into a valuable video for you guys i actually go over onto notion and on notion i have a youtube project in which one of the section is called ideas and so i literally just list down all my ideas so far i have made about 30 videos but i have found that i have listed probably more than 50 60 ideas so with all those ideas listed it could be as simple as just going over the list and picking one and making a video or once in a while i just develop a spontaneous idea and i decide okay let me make a video about this right now and i get myself making a video as an example i made this video where i was going to also talk about the keyboard that i use currently the blitzwolf bwkb1 and basically the research involved reading the manufacturer's website to look at specs and so on all this time as i do all those things i actually write down the notes on notion my notes are usually in two formats number one bullet points number two a uh, whole script when i do a video like this i only use bullet points and uh, you can see these are the bullet points so once in a while i just glance down here check out a point and narrate it to you guys but the other way i make videos especially technical videos productivity videos with a lot of points and so on is actually making a whole script i write down everything that i'm going to say and i read it off my teleprompter let me let me show you i i have a a few moments later this right here is a tiny teleprompter which uses a phone I place the phone over here and there's a teleprompter app which scrolls down the text as I read it off here. The disadvantage is sometimes you might look like a robot, you might look plastic, you have to be, you know, creative, you have to uh, pretend that you're looking here and there so that it does not appear like you're reading. But for most videos like this, I simply just have my bullet points and talk to the camera. I'm coming back. Okay. Next is actually the actual video shooting and believe you me, it's actually the shortest part of the whole process. Shooting this talking head kind of video actually takes me probably 40 to 1 hour at most with all the mistakes I make and I make a lot of mistakes. If you don't so yeah, without factoring in all that time, um, actually, so yeah, without factoring in all that time, uh, taking, so yeah, without factoring all that time, shooting this talking head kind of video is, without factoring in all that time, shooting this talking head kind of video actually takes me probably 40 to one hour at most with all the mistakes I make. And uh, yeah, I make a lot of mistakes. I, I I make a lot of mistakes. So yeah, without... So yeah, they're about 40 or so. 
So yeah, the about 40 or so minutes of video is what will be cut down to what you guys will usually watch for like 7 to 10 minutes. Anyway, shooting the video involves two things. One, there is what we call an air roll. Actually, this is what you are watching, uh, me speaking to the camera or rather the story of the video. And two, there is what is called the B-roll. For example, when I bring on the screen a shot of the keyboard that I'm talking about or maybe the microphone that I'm talking about, that's called the B-roll. So to get ready to shoot the arrow, I do two things. One is to decide the exact background that I will go for. You guys know how my videos look like. There's this background or that background. And two, it's setting up the equipment, the camera, the lights, and the microphone. And the camera is this Sony A6400 with the Sigma 16 millimeter lens on it. There's a key light. That is the light that is actually illuminating me. And uh, just to show you the difference, if I turn it off, this is what it looks like. No key light. Light on. So yeah, you can see the difference. The light is an LED panel called Yangno YN600L. And sometimes I add another light, a smaller light called a fill light to just fill in the darker parts of myself. But today, as you can see, this side is a bit darkish because I haven't added a second fill light. I've just decided to go for this vibe. And the other lights that I have in the room are what are called practical lights or rather just lights to illuminate the room. Sometimes in the background, you'll see a light like this. This is actually a desk light from Xiaomi, but in this video, it's actually acting as a practical light. There's a light somewhere there in the background. I'm sure you can see it. That blue hue that it's casting over there on the wall. It just makes the shot a little bit more beautiful, but it's not the key light that is actually lighting me. Next is the microphone. And actually, the microphone that I use the most nowadays for this kind of shot is this tiny shotgun microphone called the Boya BY-MM1. So yeah, it's just up here, just up here, right out of shot so that you guys can see it. Yeah, this is the microphone just over here. After doing the air roll, next I head over to start shooting the B-roll. So on Notion, I list all the shots I need to take for B-roll and that helps me to just save some time instead of trying to decide what exactly I'm going to shoot. Editing takes me at least four hours for one video. Sometimes it goes more than that. I mostly use three pieces of software to do all my edits and they are all from Adobe. Number one is Adobe Premiere Pro. I use that literally to cut up the video, remove all the unwanted parts and do a few transitions here and there. Number two is Adobe After Effects. I use that to add all these things. You see, an example is, uh, let me just add my name down here. This address, this comes from Adobe After Effects and I use a feature called dynamic linking where I link my project on Premiere Pro and that in After Effects and so I can just get any asset from After Effects and drop it onto Premiere Pro. And the third piece of software I use is Adobe Audition and I use that for editing the audio. Let me just give you an example. This is how the audio sounds before I do any edits at all. And this is how the audio sounds after I throw it into Adobe Audition remove the background noise, do some normalization, add an equalizer here and there. Now once all that is done, next is usually to add some background music to the video. I will link down below all the places that I get my background music from. I get them from sources that are guaranteed to be copyright free. And there are basically some YouTube channels like Audio Library Plus and so on. And after all that editing is done, it's rendering out the video. That's combining all those things to actually uh, finished video and that is tedious i tell you you know i use my laptop which doesn't have the muscle to produce this 4k video sometimes it takes up to 10 hours for this laptop to render one video worth 10 minutes ah uh, it's 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 a pain but i'm working on it there's a new video coming very soon you will see the changes that i am making and i'm looking forward to rendering very fast with a new system wait for it. In fact, so that you don't miss that video, make sure you are subscribed. There's that subscribe button down here. Go and ruin it and also ruin the notification bell that is next to it so that whenever I upload a new productivity or digital life video, and that is every week, you can be sure not to miss it. Next is the 
publishing of the video. I use checklist for editing and for publishing just to make sure I don't miss any important steps. Interestingly, once you develop a checklist kind of workflow, you tend to just get used to it. You no longer even refer to the checklist because you know I already have all the steps memorized. Publishing basically involves creating the thumbnail and the thumbnail is actually those pictures that you see when you're scrolling on your YouTube page which make you decide do I click on this video or not. Strangely the content in a video might be trash but the thumbnail is good so everyone is just like or a video might be awesome with a nice thumbnail but everyone will just let it be. So yeah it's a strange playing field out here. Now once I have the video uploaded, I add the description which is always down here below this video. I do use a template for the description so I basically just edit a small portion of the description. And once I do a few things here and there, the video is ready to be scheduled. Sometimes I might even make two videos on the same day then publish them on two different dates in the future. And so sometimes when the video goes live I actually watch it myself together with you guys and I actually I'm the first person to like the video because even I can like my own video. YouTube allows it. So yeah, if no one likes this video, uh, there will always be one like and that will be me. <laughs> there will always be two likes. There will be myself and the good wife listening to me right now. That is it guys for today. That is how I make my YouTube videos. If you found some value in this video, be sure to like it so that YouTube knows that this is not a useless video. And thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. And as always, no pressure.